Hey guys, welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T, and today I'm going to briefly be walking you through a new uh, NHL predictor that I'm currently working on. It is in no way ready to go for prime time. It's not ready to go live, but I did want to give you guys some insight into how I'm currently building another predictor for the NHL. Uh, made some tweaks and some changes, trying to account for more uh, variance within the game. So here we go, the NHL predictor that I'm currently working on. All right, so this is going to be the dashboard. I've said in many videos that I like to have the dashboard to be able to pull in all the information in one location. That way I can evaluate it. Um, again, this is not fully complete, so bear with me while we're going through some of this stuff. So the first thing that I have here, obviously, is going to be the teams. I have the away team and the home team. I'm also counting for, in this model, the goalies. So I have a goalie picker here. Then from there, it's going to actually fetch the goalie save percentage. So that is going to be useful in this model. The next thing I have is power plays. So what this is, is it's trying to figure out how many goals do they score on power plays. Often, uh, some teams are really good at drawing penalties, whether, uh, you know, hopefully they're not diving, but often they can frustrate other teams to want to take a whack at them, hook them, slash them, and they can draw the penalty and get the power play going. Um, this is going to be for power play kills. Um, I'm still working through some of the logic that's going to be built in for that one. Then I have a basic predicted win. So this is not by a spread. This is just straight who will win. So if you're trying to bet a money line. Then I have a predicted score, which is based on, as we had built before, a P-score model. Then I have a predicted sum score, which is now going to take the P-score model that I've built and it's accounting for the power play goals that are possibly going to be happening to give us a new predicted score. I also will have a predicted cover. Again, I haven't finished filling this sheet out, so that is still needing some work. We have a predicted goal total, which is not based off of the power play goals. Um, this one I'm still tweaking right now on some of the numbers, but this is gonna show for, here's my predicted total. Now let's take a look at what the over under bets will be. I have my odds, which is where I'll be pushing through different values to base upon different types of bets I'll be placing. Then I have the book odds, where I can enter in what is the spread of the game, what are the odds of this game, and then get my edge. So in this one right now, it's calculating out money line odds, since I do not have a value populated into the spread. So here it says Nashville versus the New York Rangers. Uh, there's a 23% edge on this game, if this was the scenario that they were to be playing in. Um, the, over here, I have the home ice advantage. So this can vary in the NHL depending upon from stadium to stadium, and it can change year to year. A middle of the road average is that you have a .33 goal uh, home ice advantage. As I said earlier, I am using the P-score model. So if we go here, I have another tab that is P-score. And in here, I have uh, two different types of uh, P-score models. The reason why I do this is because it will start to account for different chances based upon the spread. So I want to include one that has the value of a spread and one that is not including the spread. That way it's just, if I were to bet the money line, here's the probability. If I were to bet the spread, here's the probability. This one is not complete. This was just me setting up the data in preparation for that. And again, sheets in progress. The next thing is that you have the goalie stats. So I grabbed the goalie stats from hockeyreference.com and I went ahead and just put them in here. And I'm using similar uh, formulas and things like indirect matches to get the information to populate onto the dashboard screen. Team advanced is based upon the penalties and shots and things like that. So I have regular 5v5 and then I have penalty information down below it. So I've gone ahead and made those modifications. So now I'm accounting for what are the penalties, how many times do they have a penalty, how many shots do they get on penalties, things like that. I called it outputs because we have several types of outputs on here. We have the basic 5v5, offensive strength, home, away. Uh, the defensive strength, home, away. We have power play goals for strength, power play goals against things like that in here. So there's a lot of different outputs, but again, this is mainly averages based upon the teams and how many games they've played. Then I have in here the away home, which is additional stats um, rather than breaking it into multiple tabs. Um, I've gone ahead and just put it all into one tab. So we have the home data and then the away data. This helps for, again, when you're trying to get scores and averages and things like that. So I have all this information in its own sheet. 
Power rating is a sheet I'm still working on. Um, I haven't finished this up. Right now it looks blank because I'm just not ready to show what's on the content. Then we have Monte Carlo, where again, I'm also gonna be hooking in a Monte Carlo model into this. So what I'm planning on doing for this is that I'm gonna be using P-score models to do score predictions um, and probabilities of money lines. I'm going to then be doing a linear regression model as well to try and get me some values as far as how many goals are gonna be scored by each team. I'm gonna have Monte Carlos running, and then I'm also going to be using a power rating system to try and adjust some of the averages within the system. So in here, again, that is why I want a dashboard, because that way I can pull in all that information into one location. So far, this has been moderately accurate. It's operating around 48% accuracy without a uh, regression model, without the Monte Carlos running, and a lot of those other things that I'm gonna be needing. Uh, hopefully those things are going to fine-tune this a little bit more so that we can get up and over 58% accuracy. If you're hitting over 58% accuracy, you're doing fantastic. Even at 58% accuracy, you're doing really well. So this model, again, it's getting there. It's not there by any means yet, but I did want to give everybody a quick look into what this model looks like and how I'm slowly building it out. Um, I do intend on expanding upon this and adding additional data points. So you can then go out and create something very similar to this using similar logic and thought, and then you can build one for yourself. Um, this is again, basics, nothing super complicated. I do plan on doing a bunch of walkthrough videos on how do I set this up. In my previous one, um, I did an Excel model and that one was about a 30 minute video. I know that's a really large video and a kind of chunky. So what I do intend on doing is breaking this one up into several shorter videos so that it's easier to digest and understand. If you prefer to have longer videos, let me know. I'm gonna try and keep these to around 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, that is the smallest I can really do some of these in because it does require showing how to fetch the data, where do you drop it, these complicated formulas and things like that. So that is it. As always, if you like this content, feel free to subscribe, leave me a comment on some things that you'd like to see, some things I can improve on, anything like that. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop those as well, and I'll try and answer those as fast as I can. I do try and be as responsive within 48 hours. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, until the next time, happy wagering.